exactly what I feel. Your, your normal fiddling around with animals. That's what got us here in the first place. Hello, Veg Heads. Mike here from Anti Vegan Nonsense, and today we're talking about that new strain of avian flu that seems to be affecting humans. And a special thanks to Leora, aka Bohemian Bee, as well as Patrick Stewart for the collaboration in making this video. <coughs> and I'm Patrick Stewart. So you might remember when I posted this video on their way to be murdered. In the morning, on the day that I had recorded that video, I got this in my news briefing on my phone. A new strain of bird flu, which has already affected humans. Just when you thought we were starting to get out of one pandemic, here we go into the possible next. Since before Christmas, I've been posting about a bird flu that's been racing around the planet. And here we go, a brand new strain jumping to humans. Oh, I want to get back to normal, going to get back to normal. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute, wait a minute. You're normal. Didn't it get us in this fucking mess in the first place? You know, <laughs> eating animals, fiddling around with them. Grab him. You can see right behind his testicles, there's a small knot right there. Okay, put him back on the ground. You'll see the moment I grab it, can you see that for me there? Now, how much are we going to collect? The answer is we're going to collect about one or two cc's. There's no point collecting a whole bunch of semen. This dog was actually collected from yesterday for a customer who's going to collect it again today. So you can see here, I've got a pretty good grip on it. I've got pretty good control of this dog. Still people deny it as well. That's, that's what gets me. Is people don't seem to understand what got you in here in the first place? No, it's not just to do with, oh, you know, I said, oh, I'm going to carry on eating um, animals. Oh, it'll be all right. The usual abuse, that type of thing. Isn't that your normal got us all into this? It's the crazy thing. It, she's 100% right. Meat eaters normal is what got us into this very mess that we are in. So why would we continue that? Yet here we are continuing to do the exact same thing that got us into the current situation that we're in now. Only as meat demand seems to increase, we keep doing this more and more and more. And we seem to try to find different ways that we can exploit these animals and ram more and more together such as that hog farm that's going to be hosting 2.1 million pigs per year. This seriously has to end. Otherwise, we're just going to go through a really vicious cycle of one new variant of disease after another, after another, jumping from animals to humans. And as we keep increasing the amount of animals that we cram into such small places, it's going to get worse and worse and these pandemics that we're going through are going to become more and more frequent it seems like the only thing we ever seem to really learn from history is that we don't learn from history therefore we are doomed to repeat it again and again and again every day it seems like there's more and more cases of avian flu being reported whether it be on farms or in wild birds. How many more mutations is it going to take before we finally get the hint to stop fiddling with animals? So let's see what this explainer will explain. So apparently, a 41-year-old man in China's eastern province of Jiangsu has been confirmed as the first human case of infection with a rare strain of bird flu known as H10N3. The World Health Organization, or WHO, said while the source of the patient's exposure to the H10N3 virus was not known and no other cases were found among the local population, there was no indication of human-to-human -human transition yet. Well, that's a good thing that there's no indication of human-to-human -human transmission, yet avian influenza viruses that have little impact on birds can be much more serious in people, which was proven by the Spanish flu which killed 10 to 20% of everyone that it infected.
The 1918 flu epidemic, also known as the Great Flu Epidemic or the Spanish Flu, is considered the worst global pandemic in history, as it concentrated a high mortality in a short period of time. It's estimated that the mortality rate of the pandemic was between 10 and 20 percent, and that it killed between 50 and 100 million people worldwide. Many of its victims were healthy young people and adults in their 20s and 40s. The flu began to spread at the end of World War I. Although by the fall of 1917, the disease had already occurred in 14 military camps, some consider Gilbert Mitchell, a cook at Fort Riley Camp in Kansas, to be a zero patient. In February, Russia reported the first human infection with the H5N8 virus that caused huge damage on poultry farms across Europe, Russia, and East Asia last winter. Now this quote is rather interesting. As long as avian influenza viruses circulate in poultry, sporadic infection of avian influenza in humans is not surprising, which is a vivid reminder that the threat of an influenza pandemic is persistent. Basically, what that means is that as long as we continue to raise birds in close proximity to humans, which is just raising birds in general, then we are going to be under a constant threat of another influenza pandemic. So why not just simply remove the reason why we are under threat, which is the raising of the birds and just friggin' go vegan already. The strain is not a very common virus and only around 160 isolates of the virus were reported in the 40 years to 2018. See that phrasing alone is actually rather concerning, especially if this is a rare virus that's managed to mutate enough to be able to jump and affect humans. Whereas the other virus, the H5N8, it's mutated enough and has been kind of constant as a threat, but it jumps to humans, infects us, but doesn't jump to other humans. So even though it's had a lot of opportunity to mutate rapidly, it never has gotten to the point where it's jumping from human to human. This one, if it's rare and it's mutated enough to be able to jump from animals to humans, well, it doesn't have as much interaction between animals and humans as one that's a lot more common. Sounds more along the lines that it's more prone to mutate to affect humans in a way that's going to jump from human to human. That's just how I read it. It may not mean anything at all, but I still find that very fact that it's a rare virus that has managed to jump to humans to be quite concerning. This clip kind of reinforces my point that I was making about the H10N3 since it's a rare virus that's managed to jump to humans. This one, for example, the H5N1 variant that first infected people in 1997 has been the most deadly, killing 455 people globally so far. So that one's been around for about 24 years. Needless to say, it hasn't jumped from human to human, but it's been around and interacting with humans for, well, 24 years, and it hasn't made that step to be able to jump from human to human yet. Whereas the H10N3, since it's considered a rare virus, but it's managed to jump to humans with obviously much lower interaction with humans, I think that this virus might be one of concern. Obviously, I do hope I'm wrong, and honestly, I could be very wrong. And that'd be fine. I have no problems being wrong about this at all. My problem is if I'm right. And this is the last real snippet from this explainer. And honestly, what did we learn from all this? At least me personally, I, I just learned that basically they have no idea what's going on. They're guessing, they're taking shots in the dark and hoping for the best. They, they want to get the genetic code of the H10N3 variant, of course, so that they can see, oh, is it gonna be able to jump from human to human easily, or what's going to happen? So really, for an explainer so far, 
I don't think it did a very good job explaining really a whole lot of anything. In fact, it's basically taken it and said, hey, guess what? This virus might be a virus of concern. And if, either way, regardless whether it's true or not that it's a virus of concern, we should simply just take out the elevated risk of another pandemic. Just get rid of the animal farming. It's really that simple. The very fact that there are vegans alive today that have never eaten a piece of meat in their entire life, the very fact that my kids are still alive today after six years being vegan says everything. We don't need to eat, abuse, or keep animals to live. It's that simple. Don't forget, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe, and thanks for watching. No more excuses. Just go vegan already. Alright! Patrick Stewart!